Welcome everyone to uh, to the latest TX podcast. Um, we've got another special guest in today who's Davide from uh, Linkaeus, a partner company that's working with Streamer and TX on a project we won uh, towards the end of last year in the healthcare, pharmaceutical and uh, education industries. Uh, and I also have my co-host here, uh, Jano. So, guys, do you want to give a quick introduction and, um, and then we'll get on to the topic of the day? Uh, I'm David Zakanini. I'm the managing director at Linkeus. Uh, we are a private research center uh, with uh, different commercial endeavors in the area of mobilizing and leveraging at scale biomedical data for both the traditional sectors of the industry, so pharmaceutical companies and clinical research, but more importantly for the new wave of biomedical innovations in the area, especially of artificial intelligence and automation in, in the hospital of the future, as, as you might call it. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with uh, TX and Streamer. Um, we've been sort of seeing eye to eye the problem of sharing data at scale in this industry. And something I really like about you guys is how boldly you took on really the fundamentals of this market instead of going for you know opportunistic solutions and the product that you're developing align very well with our vision because coming from a research environment big questions are uh what we deal with on a daily basis and you're kind of unique in this sense um as a private institution to really want to work at this kind of fundamental issues rather than um, you know, short-term market opportunities. So I'm very glad to be here. Thanks, Davide. That's that's very kind of you to say that. Jano, would you like to introduce yourself now? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Jano here, uh, Head of Technology at TX. And uh, should we talk a little bit about uh, our backgrounds a little bit? I think Davide has a really interesting background. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Do you want to elaborate on that a bit, Davide? Because because you come from the industry, uh, very much so. Yeah. So uh, my friends and colleagues joke about my uh, sort of mixed career, saying that I am a recovering surgeon. <laughs> I am indeed. Uh, I am indeed a medical background, and and what pushed me to focus on technology was. Indeed, the problem of scaling up technologies that could really make a dent in the bottom line of medicine, both from a clinical outcome standpoint and from a cost standpoint. And rapidly, the realization was that you don't do any of that if you don't have a healthy data ecosystem. And we started focusing in a pretty important project, the My Health, My Data, that was financed by the European Commission in 2016 on how do you solve this problem of, of applying compliance to large data ecosystems on a peer-to-peer -peer type of framework. The silos model of medicine where hospitals or private players own data and they try to defend this data against both uh, malicious actors and uh, compliance risks is just not working. It's just not scaling. Uh, it is probably one of the main drawbacks to innovation in the medical sector that 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 you can see. Um, the GDPR is, in a way, setting clear rules around how data should be exchanged, but it's not directly providing solutions to be compliant with those rules. Mm. And so my data was an attempt to provide those solutions, and actually we did. It was a very successful project in which blockchain and other privacy-preserving technologies were successfully applied in a fairly uh, big-scale type of deployment. And as we were working on, on these new concepts, um, I came across you guys and found that there was this kind of perfect marriage between our vision of a compliant ecosystem and your vision of a compliant data economy. And, uh, and since then, working on the crack about uh, which brings out the data concept forward into really monetizing this compliant data exchanges, um, 
we have been able to put some of these benefits in practice and uh, really excited to see what, what we have done already and what, uh, and what we'll be doing. So can was really to create a data marketplace in, in healthcare. And to me, that's the only way you can really solve that, that issue of, of a balkanized data ecosystem, such as the one you have in medicine. Uh, pharmaceutical companies and healthcare companies in general are basically salivating over these silices that are inside hospitals or inside research centers. Um, but this friction has not been cannot be eased if you don't put patients in the in the equation at the center of the equation. And and this is what you guys really can do uh, with with your data unions. Um, and and we come at this link chaos comes at this from a from a compliance standpoint and so again it was i think a perfect marriage between between the visions between the underlying technology stacks and and the potentials that we see well um just so I, for our listeners we'll explain what a data union is a little bit later on because you're probably not familiar with that term unless you've listened to the the previous podcast that we've done so we'll, we'll explain that in a little while but um yeah thanks to Vide. so just to finish the sort of intros then Yano, do you want to quickly introduce yourself i'll finish mine and we'll get on to the sure. topic of today sure so my background is uh, a little bit on a research side but mostly on the software development on various different projects and different scales but lately i've been a little bit thinking more of this uh uh, business hat on top of my head and looking like how this uh, new type of digital business can be developed and uh, created. Great. And I'm Ben Shepherd. Uh, I'm man- the managing director of TX. Uh, my background is about 15 years working in um, hardcore transportation projects, building railways and roads and ports and all sorts all over the world. Then I pivoted into fisheries and got into do sustainable fisheries projects. Um, and looking how you could use private finance to improve the infrastructure around that. And then I made another little pivot into technology, um, which brought me into TX and Streamer. Um, And now I find myself here being very passionate about data and working with fantastic people and companies like the V-Days and and, and Linkaeus. So today's topic, data economies, um, specifically around pharma and health, um, and um, and how that sort of relates to what we've been doing, our partnership and, and the projects that we that we think we'll be doing in the future together on that. So, um, Davide, what excites you about data economies in the pharma and, and, uh, and health industries, pharmaceutical and health industries? Well, this is a this is a big question because there are so many levels on which. Um, you can you can see the potential impact of a healthy, transparent, um, compliant data economy versus the state of crisis. I mean, I don't want to be too emphatic here, but um, you just opened the news every day, and there is another massive data breach, another uh, of those huge deals between large corporations and healthcare systems that fall into into those gray areas in terms of privacy and somebody see that scandal somebody um, appeals to unclear regulations in that specific jurisdiction it's it's really not uh sustainable the the current state and um so what if we solve this type of problem if we create this type of ecosystem the the that that really works for people for businesses and for societies, the impact is going to be massive. You're going to have a magnitude more of innovation because the data circulate and a pharmaceutical company who's looking for drug targets can directly query in a compliant way data from wearable devices, data from lifestyle, uh, data repositories. Uh, coming from the clinical research myself, uh, this gap between what you come up in a lab and what you can really say about that drug in the real world is huge. And and part of this gap depends on the fact that you don't have real-world data. 
real world data is a big topic has been a big topic for the last 10 years everybody recognized that clinical trials are not reality and the, to bridge that gap you need data that are in people's cell phone wearable devices in their electronic medical records and you cannot access today if not by some of these twisted high cost frequently not entirely compliant ways that are available today so if you if you tell me about a data economy that that can actually ease that friction between getting the data and bringing the data into the clinical research environments the impact is just you you cannot even count how much um that could change um the second area that really excites me about data economies is that this whole concept of of patients being empowered which is one of the main principles in the gdpr it's it's a beautiful principle it's not going to happen if you don't have the right technology to empower patients it will remain that letter as as it has been for the last uh decades i think um, um just to touch on that as well davide with this obviously this coronavirus going around at the moment there's been a no- number of governments that have been um sort of been quite intrusive in tracking where people are um and might have been sort of in the vicinity of people that have coronavirus but if there was a system that was set up where people could actually opt in and say you know i'm very happy to share data that's going to identify if i've been in areas where you know other people with coronavirus have been i think people would happily sort of open that up wouldn't they if that system was there it doesn't need to be done in a way that's um that's sort of done behind our backs it can be done very much the other way around where individuals can can sort of give that permission and be in control of it oh absolutely and we have evidence that people actually want to participate like the data donation or the sort of ethical use of data is not just a catchy phrase it's actually that people something that people really respond to we've done a quick study nothing huge or statistically too significant during my health my data but it was it was very clear the fact that when you ask people if they're interested in sharing their data for clinical research unequivocally the answer is yes and because of course there is a perceived value of you know i give my data to a pharmaceutical company they develop something that in the long run i may need or or somebody i love may need so this is this is well demonstrated but again we're back to the point of what technology really allows you to do that and what technology offer you some kind of rewards in this era of overwhelming notification anxiety from my phone what what technology allows me to share my data compliantly and in a way that is not asking me too much in terms of my personal time to participate in in that ecosystem so uh, yeah and and if you if you think about what could have been done if such a system was in place for the current pandemic uh I I bet that this these whole curves that we have been trying to flatten in terms of new cases or 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 even deaths would have been flattened much earlier uh through and probably our economy would have suffered less because this type of tracking uh platforms would have allowed you to have much more surgical and targeted interventions on hotspots saving other areas where you didn't see much activity of the virus while well, we had to go blanket on locking systems down because we didn't have those data yeah what what i what i love about this is you know in our other data economy sort of um podcasts and projects that we've talked about it's it's been about how enterprises can benefit how they can create a new business model how they can you know improve pnl and you know get income for their for their for their customer base but here we're actually talking about potentially being able to save lives by making data accessible in a way where patients or individuals are in control of it they've given permission to it and being able to respond to national international emergencies far more quickly and you know that's that's amazing when you can think you know when you can see a way to actually you know get better ac- or get more rapid access to that data to solve issues like that i mean that's that's amazing stuff 
true even even in uh, non emergency contexts um such as this pandemic in in, in on a day to day basis 